Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Shirtless Plantain Show. This is the Euros edition. We have started the quarterfinals. It's me, your host, Tosin, alongside Coach. How you doing today? Oh, man. The, the highs and lows of, of exciting of exciting football match and a complete ball fest to that. It's ridiculous, man. They need to they need to prescribe drugs for how how to manage your regulate your emotions because <laughs> that Germany game and then you're forced to watch that France game, it just feels it feels abusive to be honest. We we're, we're gonna get into it. Um <laughs> Dean is not Dean's not here with us today. Um he's got to take care of his children, so pay your child support if you're listening. Um but yeah, let's talk about Spain and Germany. Um mm. coach, take it away. I have nothing to really like start off with i need you to talk to me about this game um i'll be honest i think it was a really good game but i've seen the narrative that spain were a much better side and i just disagree i think it was a it was quite even but germany overall were for me the better actually actually the better side and were the better side for the majority of the match to be honest um i think what kind of there's a germany had a few problems problems today but i think the major problem for me was the muscle memory of their midfield kind of went with the changes that were made. So there was a huge, like, Emre Chan came in and there was, there was this huge gap between their midfield and their centre-backs where Spain kept on getting in. And then you look at the actual goal, the first goal that happened, they like, well, OK, Danny Olmo has, has ghosted into that space. Now, I don't know if it was due to um, suspensions or injuries as the reason why they had to reshuffle the pack. Unfortunately, I can't remember. But... Whatever the reason for it, I don't feel like Nagelsmann actually accounted for for what it, what it actually meant to to the balance of the team. Um, with that being said, I still think that they they managed quite well after that. Um, Spain, on the other hand, I think the early the early injury to Pedri probably made them better. Hundred um, percent. Yeah, it made them better, and I think one of the main reasons is, is that in tournament football internationally. You need guys that are razor sharp, especially in your midfield. Especially when you look at their midfield and you think, okay, you've got Rodri, Ruiz kind of thing. Who's going to be that player that provides the spark from midfield in front of goal? And while Pedri is supremely talented and better than most of your favourite midfielders, he isn't quite that goal for that Olmo, that Olmo is. Um, and that, that made, that, obviously, that made things easier for Spain when they attacked because they got the ball to him quite quite regularly and it caused problems for Germany. Um but yeah I suppose I suppose we'll we'll circle we'll, we'll circle back to more of their problems. But yeah that was that was one of my that was my major takeaway from it. That gap between the defence and midfield was just troublesome for Germany. Yeah and to buttress your point, Emre Chan, like I think he's a good player. Don't think mm. he's a great player. I think he's a good player at best. Like his fit with Tony Cruz was not it. You need more of that steel with Robert mm. Hendrick. You need you need that sort of like even if you were going to bench Andrick, you should have played Pascal Gross if you're going to keep it a butt. If you really want to switch it up, right? If that's what you want to do, I think that for me personally, I would have played Pascal Gross. I just don't think Emre Chan in this sort of game has like, and I'm trying to use English, but like I have to use Yoruba because there's a certain Yoruba word I have to use. I don't think he has the Agidi to play there. You know what I mean? <laughs> I like I can't explain that in English, but you know exactly what I mean. Like yeah. he doesn't have that. He doesn't have that steel. For those of you who want me to translate, I get he doesn't have that. Like compared to you know, a, do you know, do you know, I feel like physically he's he, he can match them, but the issue is that I think the major problem I think is just positionally. Yeah, like, genuinely, if Emery Chan was was good positionally, I think he'd probably still be finding his way around a team that's not Dortmund. It's probably someone a bit better. For sure. Because you've got sure. the physical tools, but yeah, it's just it was just it was just it was just weird. But Germany still managed to to find their way into the game. I think what was really clever, actually, what I really enjoyed, and it felt it feels like a million years ago, yeah. But I know it's pretty much I think from the first minute, Kimmich was ridiculously high, like yeah, higher than giraffe pussy, bro, <laughs> <laughs> and. He, they basically like Nagelman was like, okay, I trust my best defender to deal with their best attacker, which is obviously Nico Williams. And yeah. they went to three. They went to three, three at the back, basically. Um, whenever Germany had, whenever Germany had the ball, because they knew that Kimmich wasn't going to get back in time anyway. But even if he was going to be back in time, Nico Williams is ghosting past him nine times out of ten anyway. So it's like, I'll put you on, I'll put you on, I'll put Rudiger on you, and let's and show me what you've got, kind of thing. And I think it's a smart move. The only issue is, is that Rudiger is a centre-back because sometimes he has to cover for his left centre-back. 
And when he did do that, he ended up picking up a yellow card. Yep. So that made things slightly more complicated for Germany as well. But I have to say again, I have to give credit to this Germany team. They still found a way to keep going. Like it didn't even it didn't even bother them. And I don't want to talk about the refs too much, but genuinely speaking, I I couldn't believe the standard of refereeing in both games. To be honest, but those you know yellow what's... cards, some of these yellow cards were just ridiculous. They were, they were dumb for no reason. Bro, do you have many people who I saw tweet said, "Oh, this is why Premier League fans get mad at referees." This is what we deal with. <laughs> it's, it just is what it is. We give you our best, Anthony Taylor, Michael Oliver. There you go. <laughs> they're not. Our, so. They're not our best. They're just. They're just essentially the ones that are less shit. That, yeah. They don't even, and they, the funny thing is, they say that I say, I say that they're less shit. That like they aren't shit. No, these guys are absolute dog shit. The worst. Like they're the like English refs are the worst in Europe, as far as I'm concerned. I, I, and I don't. I don't need to. I don't need to study all the other referee referees. I'm sorry. I know what I know, and I think they're so shit. And I feel like. In a way, it just kind of it just it was spoiling things because you can't really tackle properly now. Yeah. And then psychologically, you're thinking, well, "What's the point of me even giving my own? I'm not going to play the next game." Like all all these little things, like will be will be playing in, in players' minds because they can't really they can't they can't play their game because they know they're getting, they're getting yellows for for bullshit tackles. So that was that was definitely annoying. But I think De La Fuente was was naive, but I'm guessing it must be physical. You take off, you know, your your two best attackers, the ones with pace kind of thing, and you turn yeah. like, like, what did you think of that hip? Like, I think you took them off a bit too early, personally. Way too early. Um, yeah. I mean, we've seen this over and over again. That's how Bayern Munich lost to Real Madrid. They did the mm-hmm. same thing. So, I think they took their guys off way too early. They got very, very lucky that they, that, you know, they scored with Mikel Moreno, which we'll get to eventually, but... <laughs> They took those guys off way too early because, again, like, and I hate to sound like this PMP guy, right? But there's certain times, like, and I watched, I'll give you an example of Copa America. When I watched Argentina versus Ecuador, right? Mm-hmm. Ecuador had more more physicality than mm-hmm. Argentina. Argentina's experience kind of won out in the end. But Spain had way more physicality than than Germany, you know, when it told mm-hmm. in, that, in that game, especially when Lamine Yamal, who is fucking incredible, mm-hmm. him and Nico Williams are just different class those two are amazing those two young kids like they are they're they're truly fantastic one player i want to give a big shout out to who though is danny calvahal danny yeah. calvahal is a prick of the highest yeah. order and you need that that red card he did that's yeah. professional that that's what i love that's football he knew what he was doing danny yeah. calvahal like i generally feel he's been one of the best if not the best right back in the world for a few years now he's just incredible like he's going forward from time to time, but what he brings is just intangible. He's a leader, and it just he's, is he's, what it it's, is. It's the grit. It's the grit and experience that things that you play next to him, and he's infectious. Like mm-hmm. he's one of those infectious players that you know raises your level, even if it's only by one percent. But you end up playing better because he's in the team. Like yeah. I have my gripes with him. You know, I don't like. You know, there's certain things about his game that I don't particularly. I'm a fan of, but. Look, man, you're, you don't, you're not right, right back of Real Madrid for God knows how many years if you're not half decent at football. Do you know yeah. who he reminds me of? I know a lot of people are going to kill me for what I'm about to say, and I know you know what I'm about to say, who he reminds oh. me of. Oh. Yes. I, do you know what? I see, I, and I, I understand the, the, the comparison because there's a certain know-how of, of, of a football game of how to navigate 90 minutes that you can't, you can't really teach. You know what I mean? It's like players, players are... There's some players that are born for it, kind of thing. And Carvel, Neville, them man are actually they're born for it, you know. So they're not, and they're not the sexiest, right? No, they're not. No. They're not. They're not the Kyle Walkers yeah, or the obviously very, yeah. very like, good top class players. But you know, I get, I get exactly what you what you mean, man. Yeah. Especially in you know what? Do you know like, what else has been cool. really good this tournament too? Cucurella. Um, I don't know what Lafonte mm-hmm. has done for him mentally, but I saw some today tweet. Why is um why is he starting over um what's it called over um. Grimaldo is like, first of all, they're playing a flat back four. Grimaldo's yeah. a left wing back. Second of all, Kukure, all, all fairness to him, he's been very good this tournament. He's been excellent. I've had a he's few lapses, but he's, yeah, he's great. He's been great. Yeah. Uh, but listen, overall, man, like, it was a great game. Um, yeah. It's a shame that Tony Cruz's career went out like that, but you know, I noticed in one, the second one half. More, one more the, thing, though. Right. So just one, one more thing on, on, on Germany and, and, and their attack. It was quite to be honest. They a lot. They got a lot of joy from their fullbacks, right? Because I feel like the attacking midfielders weren't really cutting it. And Havertz got quite a few chances, and he missed them. There's a couple I definitely think he should have scored. The lob was a huge moment, and I feel like 
he definitely should have scored that. Do you think he should have passed it or, or chipped it? When he chipped it, yeah. Do you and think I, he should have passed it or do you think he should have went for it? Passed it to who? You know, by the time the ball was coming over, but by the time the ball was at the crossbar, I don't think Wurtz was even in the box yet. Yeah. So, pass it to, uh, uh, yeah, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not really hearing that. But I think what was really interesting is the fact that Nagelsmann didn't, didn't fuck around. This is what I was talking about in earlier pods when I said that Germany have a lot of ways to win football matches. You know, they brought on full Krug, they kept Havertz on, kind of thing. Went to two big men up front this time, and just kept whipping the ball into the box. Mm-hmm. And then, lo and behold, it was flipping Kimmich. You got the knockdown back towards goal for Wurtz, who's you know all of you know five foot three to score. Basically, <laughs> it was you know, it, and but, but that's what I mean. Like they have such a variety of because the way they they attacked in the last thirty to forty minutes was completely different to how they you know attacked in the first hour of the game. So I'm saying, so it's like. They they are they are a team of, of that wears that wears many hats and I have to give my hat to, take my hat off to, to Nagelsmann for that. Um yeah, for sure. but I think people can clearly see now why Havertz definitely w- 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 is is the main man for Germany up front. Like yeah, he didn't score. And to be honest, his overall tournament I think was actually pretty good despite the stats saying otherwise. But Germany couldn't have played the way they played without him. Like they, oh, just, for sure. they just they just couldn't have. Yeah. Like for real. If he if 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 Havertz is is bagging is bagging more goals, that's that's fantastic, and I feel like that's what he should be doing. We can't in, in, underestimate the way he's able to platform the others around him as well. That's yeah. that's that's a very very key key thing. And full crew, like probably by the next time the, the next tournament is around, he won't be around. But guess who will yeah. be? Havertz will be. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So. Um. One player we have to like single out. I'm sorry, Leroy Sane, man. That injury cooked him, bro. Yeah. He's he's Done. we gotta we gotta do the dub emojis, man. It's it's. It's, it's sad. He's done. And there's a reason why they got Michael Elise. There's an absolute yeah. reason why, because yeah. that boy, that boy can't do it no more. He's um, nice. That goal is called Mikel, Mikel Moreno. You would never think Mikel Moreno was a goddamn midfielder the way he jumped in yeah. the air like that. Had both his legs spread out like he's Michael Jordan. That was but incredible. He, you know, Joey, he, he's such an underrated player and he's so, I think, I think, I think the misconception with him is that because obviously the position, the position he plays, he, he, he can't play per se. Marino is a baller, and I feel like Spain probably are underrated in the sense that they they have um what do you call it? They don't have an abundance of of you know attacking talent like they had back in the day, kind of thing. And but, not not and not a lot of sexy names. Yeah, but like, you, look at, you look, no go ahead, go ahead. Nothing, but you look at what a lot of these players doing at club level. Like Marino is like one of the best midfielders in, in La Liga, bro. Yeah, <laughs> and it's like, bro, you... I, th- 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 that's that. Th- that's the be- that's the long and the short of it. He legit is one of the best midfielders in the league. So, yeah, you go through the list, right? There's so many players who are just unsexed, like Fabian Ruiz, absolute baller. Danny yeah. Omo, who you know, I you know, I've been talking about Danny Omo for a while, and I said it like on the free podcast, but, like he was moving warm against yeah. Albania, and like he's showed today going to assist. So you have a lot of names who aren't sexy. Shout out to Rodri. I know he got dog walked by Lamine Yamal, but Rodri is incredible. Just. Fair play to by him. Musiala, yeah, he did. He yeah, did. Yeah, yeah. I, I really enjoyed that. But he had a good game. I won't, I won't even front. Yeah. But yeah. speaking of midfielders, I feel like this probably where we should leave, we should leave it. Tony Cruz, we might have to ded- dedicate a whole pod to you, I think. But I personally, um, I wanted Germany to go through only because I just they're the, they're the team that I think I've overall enjoyed the most probably after yeah. Spain. Um, but I'm not a huge, huge, huge fan of happy endings in football. I don't really care for them. And I feel like sometimes it's nice to see a fairy tale not go the way it's supposed to go. Like, genuinely. Like, I was rooting for France so hard in the World Cup final. Not because I love France and X, Y, Z. No, no, no. It's just, I think it would be very, very nice for Messi not to have won a World Cup personally. I don't think that's (laughs) that's just the the way I think in it. You know, like. You know, Zidane went out. Obviously, he won a World Cup before. He won a won a Euros, but he went out. He went out sad, and I think that's iconic as well. At the same time, it's iconic. Yeah. It is iconic, and I feel like Tony Cruz going out this way in a quarter final in extra time on home soil. That's iconic as well. Look at yeah, all the shit he's done in his career, and he couldn't do this one thing. That's great. I think that person. I think that's great. Yeah. I think I think it, I think it adds what's the word? It adds charm to his legend to his story. Yeah, Panache. he won. Yeah, Panache. he had he won like five or six Champions League. God knows how many league titles, a World Cup, and everything. Then his final tournament, still playing at an incredibly high level, and he couldn't bring it home. 
I personally think I, that's a great ending, personally. I, like I, got, I got two things to add, and we're going to move to over to the other game. Yeah. Tony Cruz said they showed exactly why Arturo Vidal's quote was right about him and Renault mm-hmm. uh, Gusto teaching him things. Yeah. Listen, you go on loan, right? And I generally t- say this all the time. You learn a lot of things you wouldn't learn as your club playing week in yeah. and week out. 17, 18-year-old Tony Cruz is learning from two of South America's finest just shin kickers who can also have technique. Yeah. You learn a lot of dark arts from people like that. Like mm-hmm. Sergio Ramos is a master of dark arts. I'm mm-hmm. sure Danny Cavajal learned a lot from that as well. You learn from your teammates. And today, Tony Cruz, I know a lot of people weren't happy with him and the fouls he was doing. Guess what? That's football. Yeah. If you don't actually play football, football is actually the dark arts. Like you kick people when you do things you can get away with. And Tony Cruz was doing a lot of that shit today. Yeah. So fair play. Second of all, and this is how we're going to lead into the other game. I'm going to give you a funny stat. 2007. Do you know what happened that year? 2007. Tony yeah. Cruz made his debut. Okay. Um, for he went alone to buy a mute to buy a Leverkusen in it, yeah that year. But it has nothing to do with Tony Cruz. It has something to do with Lamine Yamal. Oh yes, like Lamine Yamal obviously was born, and they had like a photo shoot or something like that. It was messy, but that's not the point. Lamine Yamal was born in two thousand and seven. Yeah. Pepe made his debut for Portugal in two thousand and seven. Ah. Fuck me. Yeah. Yeah, yeah man. <laughs> yeah, I won't lie to you. I found out how old Lamine Yamal's dad, how old his dad was, and I've been disheveled for like a week. How old bro. is his dad? He's 34, bro. So wait, he's born in 1990? <laughs> yeah, 1989 or 1991. So he's basically my age, and you're, he's basically our age, effectively. Bro, I was... Shocked. Ladies and gentlemen, this has been the Shirtless Plantain Show. We're out. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck did you just tell me? Yeah, bro? Bro? So you're telling me Mr. 304 hustle real hard is, is our age week? Yep. Yeah. So yep. that means that the year I was applying for colleges was the year that this man had his... Fair enough. Whatever, mm-hmm. man. Okay. That really took the wind out of my sails. Yeah. That, that really fucked me up just now. Wow. Okay. So, Portugal versus France, and that was not the segue I was trying to do. I was actually trying to make it a little bit sweeter. Now, Coach fucked my whole entire brain cell up because I don't yeah. know where to move from here. Um, this game was arguably one of the most boring games, but I really enjoyed it because <laughs> here's the thing. I know how Dieter Deschamps moves as a human being. I know how he moves as a person. The most telling substitution in this game that lets you know what Dieter Deschamps is about, you're going into extra time. You take off Kamavinga. You have Warren Zaire Emery who can play through passes. Like, you know how good Zaire Emery is, right? He's a talented kid. He says, fuck that. I'm bringing on Yusuf Fafana. I'm bringing another defensive mind in midfielder because you know what? I don't give a damn. And that's who Didier Deschamps is. Yeah, there's nothing, there's, there's really nothing you can do to, there's nothing that um, Deschamps can do at this stage of his um, career as French manager that will ever surprise me. Like, I have to be very honest about that. There is, there is nothing. I think, the main, the, the main thing I think that actually maybe surprised me, and it's only due to suspension, was the fact that he went with an all-black midfield. Because you know what he's like with his uh, affirmative action, inclu- in, um, um, inclusions with his, <laughs> or should I say reverse affirmative action? <laughs> with reverse with yeah. and, and whatnot. Kind of thing. Like, <laughs> I was shocked. I thought he was going to pull something out and be like, do you know what? Teo, you're going to go in midfield kind of thing. I need that balance of... of um lack of men in my midfield please but that was the that was the main thing that shocked me i can't even lie um yeah yeah but there's really nothing to take away from the game i mean no, we can sit a, here and talk game, it man. was a it was a absolute just crap fest i mean rafael Yao, again if you've watched enough milan a very serious and it's funny the best three players in this game aside from saliba all play for milan mayan <laughs> Theo Hernandez and Liao all play for yeah. Mia- Milan. Um, Saliba, on the other hand, we've said this before the game started. That's the best center back in the world, bro. What he did to Cristiano Ronaldo today was just that man. Like, and you know, you know what? I know this in the first half. Cristiano was in the center, right? He was kind of tucked off towards Ufumacano's side. Every time we go near Saliba, he was like, eh, 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 eh. "I'm going to move." Was, back. I think there was two or three occasions in the first half where he tried Saliba, and Saliba is just. Swatted, swatted him off, and we spoke about this. I think in the when we spoke about the preview of this game, actually, and Dean must have asked something like, you know, what do you think is how he's going to handle him? I was like, he probably won't have to handle him because there isn't much to do. Like, we're not defending Ronaldo in 2024 is is a cakewalk essentially. If you're a if you're a good centre back, and Saliba is at, at the very least a good centre back, right? <laughs> 
defending Ronaldo least, is going to be... At the very least, great. Let's yeah, put that <laughs> up. Where, where, wherever at this point. Like, there's, there's nothing I can say about Saliba that, you know, that, that was surprising me or anything like that. But, um, yeah, defending Ronaldo, I feel like is, it, it is what it is. It's just, it's a, it's a day of the office for him kind of thing. You know, Ronaldo yeah. 10 years ago, different story, obviously. But, yeah, for him now, it's easy. But I think it's just nice, I think it's nice to see that from where Saliba's come from, in terms of his career kind of thing, it's nice to see that he's genuinely, he's, I think he's living up to the high. I don't even say he's even exceeding it yet. He's, he's yet, to, like, he's going to get better kind of thing, but I think he's actually sure. living up to the high. Like, when we bought him, you know, and I hate this terminology, but they, they called him the Mbappe of centre-backs. That's what they, that's what people were calling him kind of thing. And I was thinking, yeah. I've been watching him, I know, I know about this kid, I know he's great kind of thing, but oh, I don't know yet kind of thing. And then, you know, he got, he got his move to Arsenal, he went on, what, three loans? What was it? He went back to Saint Etienne. Then he went did to Nice. Then he went to Nice. Then he went. Then he did um, obviously Marseille, mm-hmm. right? And then he's gone to Arsenal. And it's you know he's had to literally fight to prove himself at every stage. And then World Cup twenty twenty two happened, and the levels he was performing at before he went to the World Cup was insane, right? Mm-hmm. Didn't, I think he played what he did he even play in that World Cup he might, he might have got like 40 minutes or something I don't know I can't even remember but he didn't he obviously didn't feature that much and then Deschamps said about three or four months literally this year three four months ago there's stuff about Saliba that I still don't like that he, he said that this calendar year and now look legit like now look that Saliba yeah. he only played a uh, he only played like 37 minutes because he came on for uh, Svaral against enough. Tunisia. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, was, I was close enough. Yeah. So yeah, about, let's say, 40 minutes in, in that World Cup kind of thing, you know, never played in a major tournament before to, before this year. And by far and away, he's been the best defender in this championship. Like, it's not even close by far and away. He's, he's mental. His mental, like, resilience is off the charts. Mm-hmm. Off, absolutely off the charts, man. And yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. it's, it's I won't lie to you. It's quiet for a lot of, for a lot of guys, man. Like, there isn't there. I, I put I'd put Saliba up against any centre back in the world right now. Really, I, mean, I agree. I agree. <laughs> and you know, you know, you know, you know. So funny. Arsenal fans like that Michael Irvin meme. Yeah. Now everybody's seeing what I've been seeing for yeah. the last few years. That's what Arsenal fans feel yeah. like now. He's incredible. Yeah. Um, it's about Portugal again. We keep talking about this over and over again. Cristiano Ronaldo has hamstrung that team. And yeah. I know this is Roberto Martinez would definitely drop him. I think he's much bigger than him. I think that he has to play. I think there's some sort of clause where he has to play. But you can see that, like, it's hamstrung the players. Like, Bruno Fernandes, not like Bruno Fernandes. Liao was struggling because he was trying to find him all the time. Um, Bernardo Silva's not looking like himself. Fatinho was incredible today. Yeah. Fatinho was, him and Palinha were yeah. freaking incredible today. Absolutely great. Even um, Cancelo, he did not lose his brain cells. He actually played very well. Um, you know, Mendes as well. Yeah, it was really good. Pepe rolled back the clock. Kuben mm. Diaz was good as well. So Portugal has some players who play very well. It's that Cristiano, like it's just time, man. I think that selfishly, like at some point, you have, and that's why I love Tony Cruz because you have to take a look at yourself, like realize, like yo, I might be a detriment to my team. Let me take a fall. That's why he retired in the first place. He didn't want to mm. come back to Germany because he knew that it was a time for him to go. But like. There's something about that guy that frustrates me the most. It's just like his fans don't see it. And yeah. I think some fans are slowly seeing it, but a lot of them don't. And it's funny to see them blame other players. And people say, oh, Liao wasn't good. Liao was the best player for Portugal today by a country yeah. mile. By yeah. a country mile. He had Kunde on smoke. And Kunde yeah. is a very good defender. And yeah. I think that Kunde's right back spot, that's his. Like, he's yeah. a really good right back. I don't think you should ever look at center back again. You're a good right back. Learn how yeah. to develop some other skills. But, yeah, listen, overall, that was a very tough watch. But... At the end of the day, France pulled it out. No goals from open play still. <laughs> Two yeah. own goals in the penalty, and these niggas are in the semifinal. That's if nothing, honestly, that's that that was Deschamps' plan. I think he's even annoyed that they got two goals from from um, from set pieces and whatnot. I think he's, that's actually vexed him. But yeah, Ronaldo and Felix, all this stuttering shit. Like Ronaldo's star was um, start um, penalty was one of the most egregious pieces of cheating I've ever seen in my life. That shouldn't be allowed. Like, bro, he literally came to a full stop twice. He, this is what I'm saying. This is it's not like you're doing the Ronaldo, uh, not Ronaldo, the, the Bruno, the Jorginho, where you jump in it. No, like you're literally, you stopped. Like you, you might as well have taken a step back and started again, basically. Like, he did like, it twice. 
Yeah, like it's, it, I, I hate it so much and I'm so glad there was some justice for F- Felix trying that same bullshit and he actually missed and that cost him. Because really and truly, the ref should have said, no, you can't do that, take it again. Like, that Bro. should have... That that that's so bad. Like so 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 bad. I, I really hate that shit, man. Honestly, it's just frustrating the shit. Um, yeah. Mbappe got his nose hurt. Um, I'm sure he'll be fine for the next game. Yeah. But when Bradley Barcola came up, man, he's showing signs. I know we make yeah. the joke about he looks like babyface Ray, but he's. We're shocked that he's playing. Okay, like if you listen to the preview, we didn't think he was gonna get any minutes. But that kid yeah. is incredible. Yeah. I mean, I would. The person I was probably most shocked with today overall was just. How good Dembele was when he came on. He That's why I wore his t-shirt. Is, That's why I wore his shirt because it's him. Yeah, no, legit. Like his final action is never going to be good. I've decided. His yeah. final action is never going to be good, but everything leading up to it is incredible. Like he's sitting guys down for fun. He's creating space, you know, with, with his runs and shit. He's taking the ball past two, three players at a time, but then the final action just lets him down all the time. And I won't lie to you, I was so shocked. It felt unnatural seeing him take his penalty with his right foot. Basically, I mean that's why that's why I posted that video because yeah. he's not a serious person. They said, "Are you left footed?" Yes. Why did he take your shot? Yeah, I mean that that, that video has done numbers for years now. But that's my, one of my biggest criticisms of him is that if he focused on having a strong foot, I think his final product would actually be quite good. Yeah. But because he's he uses both so much, kind of thing. He doesn't like he doesn't know which one he's strongest one because they're both equally as shit as each other, basically. <laughs> that's what bro, it is. that's what it is. Bro, I got a couple of pain points I want to get across the way before I, before Go we on. finish. One, Randall Kolomowani, they really need to find a new striker. That guy just no, he's not it. He's absolutely get not it. Sorry, get him out. Bin him. Bin him. Second of all, that French midfield it was a bunch of industrious ass workers. I love Kamavinga. I love Chouameni. I love. I love Kante, but mm-hmm. together they're brick house men. Those yeah. are guys like in, in Nigerian culture, we say gate men. Mm-hmm. They are just there. Roku just there sitting. Yeah. That's that's what they are. And they don't have that person who can do that final pass. They miss Pogba so much. They a Pogba like player, which you can't yeah, find. Yeah, and I've, I remember Mbappe this week said something about the fact that he's had to change his game for France because he's not running as behind as much because the midfielders, they simply cannot pass that Pogba. He'd make blind runs in behind because you know Pogba is just going to see him and deliver this kind of thing. And it's not like these players can't see passes. Like, Chiumeni can see a pass, so can Kamavinga, but the execution is simply not Pogba level. It just, no. it's, just, it's just not. Yeah. So, yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I, totally, I totally agree with you in that regard. They're all fantastic world class players, but there's certain niches of their game that they don't have. You yeah. Know, Pogba is a unicorn in that regard. You know, so. Yeah. So, yeah, man. My other thing is, I love those penalties. Aside from the stop yeah. start one, those are some flipping incredible penalties. Yeah. Even the yeah. Mendes penalty tore the damn roof off. That was yeah. so good. Theo Hernandez's penalty is really good. Um, the first two were kind of playing safe Dembele and um, I mm. think it was who took the second one? Was it can't, Yusuf Afana? Yeah. Very, very like they, they, they were very conservative. I liked mm. it. Like he went straight down the middle. So that yeah, was good times, man. Like, France is going to go play Spain, and I don't have any predictions for that one. I legit can't call it. Well, the suspensions are just falling out of Spain's Spain's ears at this point. Carvajal is definitely not playing. So yeah. is Morata. Morata's not playing. Yeah. <laughs> Pedri's, Pedri's out. Pedri's out. Like, yeah, man. That's, it's going to be an interesting game. And look, France are way more stacked than Fingy. So they're going to... So Rabiot is going to be back. You know what I'm saying? Oh, God. Like, Rabiot, you know, Rabiot versus... Whoever the fuck they put in that Spain midfield is going to be interesting. Like, I think that's going to be that's going to be a good battle. Um, yeah, man. But yeah, I, I, I'm I'm back in France to probably win the whole thing now. Now that yeah. you're going, yeah. We got we got two more games tomorrow: England, Switzerland, and then we have Netherlands, Turkey. Um, mm-hmm. Coach, got any predictions with these? If Jack is fit, Switzerland are going through. Um, England all switching to a back three apparently. Yeah, don't care. Still like. You, you're going to go to a back three against the team that plays the best back three in this tournament. Okay, try it. <laughs> <laughs> let's like, see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, like they actually uh, play the best three four three. Um, Turkey, yeah. Tur- Turkey, Netherlands. Yeah, do you know what? Turkey have got bare suspensions as well. You know, Kanahoglu's back, but no Demiral. Like, yeah, yeah. That's a toss up. It's a toss up, man. It's a toss up, man. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. I know for a fact Turkey are not as polite as, as Netherlands, but yeah. No. 
Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen. Oh, quickly, Coach, you got anything else you want to add before we head out of here? Just the usual, man. Like, I'm really enjoying you guys' comments on Insta. Like, you know, you guys need to follow us on TikTok. Though. We are on TikTok and we're very active on TikTok. You know, but yeah. Yeah, enjoying the comments on, on, on Insta and on YouTube as well. Just keep liking, subscribing and sharing. Share, 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 share. Even if you want to clip shit up and, you know, stuff that made you laugh, and just put it in your socials, man. Let's just do it. Let's, let's put this shit out there for us, man. That would be, yeah. be great. And man. you guys... If you guys find a certain segment you guys find funny, you guys find insightful, message us on Instagram yeah, or Twitter. And like, I'll clip it out. You know, I, I I don't really have a life right now besides you know just clipping shit out. You yeah. know, I'm here. I'm clip, here to serve. Clip the yourself and say, guys, this shit was hilarious. <laughs> yeah, but now we appreciate you guys so much for the support, man. Yeah, man. Gonna keep going. Um, we do have some Copa America stuff that we're gonna do soon, so don't worry about that. But yeah. ladies and gentlemen, for myself. Oh, yeah. And if you guys don't listen to U.S. Men's National Team, um, I know that's a big topic right now. We do have a whole entire podcast on that one. So yeah. you can hear some good old uh, ranting and also find out that Kyle Beckerman actually is a white man. So, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> myself, Tosin. <laughs> and Coach, we're out. Everyone take it easy. Peace. Peace. Take a shot. Take a shot.